Hi everyone, welcome to my second radiograph of the day. This case again came in today uh, from orthodontic department. Why don't you take a minute to take a look at this panoramic radiograph and let me know what your thoughts are. Well, I guess you can't let me know. <laughs> um, so why don't you yeah, take a look and tell me what you see. I'm going to zoom in on this radiograph. First recognize that this patient has a mixed dentition, but the area that should have caught your eyes immediately should have been, I want to say, these impacted canines. Well, if you didn't know these were canines, I want you to start counting the teeth. Okay. This patient is about 12 years old. We have a second tooth number two, excuse me, second molar erupting. Number three, four, five. This doesn't look like number six, right? It doesn't have the shape and size of the canine. Um, but here it is. It's obviously horizontally impacted. Root of number four is mesially dilacerated. Here's number seven, eight, and nine. Okay, number ten. How does the root and overall tooth morphology look to you? Here's primary canine that's just ready to be exfoliated. The root is almost entirely entirely resorbed at this point. Premolars, first molar, and second molar. Uh, which one should we start first? Well, let's look at this one first. Number 11 um, is uh, 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 it has caused significant resorption of number 10. Number 10 has lost, unfortunately, I want to say at least one half of its root, the apical half. And uh, at this rate, as the canine continues to erupt, or at least as it tries, it's only going to cause more resorption of number 10. So this is very unfortunate case. It failed to erupt into the correct position, but it's impacted probably and uh, malpositioned within the arch, within the alveolar process. So as an orthodontist, you know, you uh, face a tough choice. Most likely in this case, you'll have to sacrifice a lateral incisor in order to bring down the canine. Uh, even if, I don't think you can, but even if you manage to bring down the canine safely here, first of all, do we have enough space? Also, in process of doing that, how much more resorption are you going to cause on number uh, number 10? And with this, what's the longevity, longevity of the tooth? What's the tooth mobility? Uh, those are some of the questions that you want to ask to yourself, right? Now let's take a look at number six. It's obviously horizontally impacted and it has a uh, hard palate and ghost image of the hard palate that's superimposed on top of number six. And uh, uh, letter C, or primary canine, again has shown uh, normal resorption as, as, we, as we would expect. Here's number 10, excuse me, number six, that shows distal distalized dilaceration. So the space that you you have is extremely narrow because of dilaceration of the adjacent teeth. Again, even if you are able to expose that tooth, my question is how could we successfully extrude that tooth into this area without causing the resorption of that pre premolar? or the lateral incisor. Again, it's a tough case for the orthodontist. Okay, Okay. now I want to shift your focus uh, to the mandibular arch. And is there anything else that concerns you? Okay. 
I hope you notice that pa patient is missing tooth number 18. And as far as I know, I talked to the orthodontist this afternoon, um, this, page, uh, this tooth is congenitally missing. So it was never extracted and number 17 is missing. So it's, uh, excuse me, number 18 is missing. So it's really interesting because in other quadrants we are seeing all three second molars. However, why just this quadrant? I'm not sure. No one really knows. On top of that, we're not seeing follicles of the third molar either. So this patient is mi congenitally missing um, all four third molars and tooth number 18. Okay. Um, additionally, it's a, m a minor detail, but I do feel that the APCs of central incisors appear a little bit blunted and a little bit on the shorter end than usual. Uh, and even the roots of first molar, okay, they look a little bit thinner and slender than what I'm used to seeing. Okay, Still probably within normal limits, so I wouldn't be too concerned, but uh, it looks thin. Okay, uh, uh, Even the distal buccal root of number three looks a little bit uh, on the thinner side. Okay, so this was taken today. Let's take a look at panoramic radiograph taken back in September of 2017. So, more than a year ago. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. We can see developing second molars, but second molar is missing. Uh, let's see, there you go. Look at that. Can you see that the follicle of canine really hasn't caused too much resorption of the lateral incisor? Maybe they're at a very early stage of resorption, but looks like they're just about touching at this stage. Okay, and so this was roughly a year and a half ago. So during that time, unfortunately, this tooth continues to continue to erupt and has caused um, a significant amount of re resorption. And look at where this canine is. It's pretty much stuck where it is. Uh, it really hasn't changed much since uh, since then. One thing that's interesting is do you see that this, the apex of first premolar appears to be located just anterior to the crown of canine? Do you guys see that? So here's the overall outline of the root. Of the first premolar and here's the crown of canine and if you recall you may remember that the root of premolar was mesially dilacerated which helps you know which makes me wonder which I think is what happened is that as this canine tries to erupt it's been uh, its eruption pathway may have been blocked by the um, the roots of this first primary, uh, excuse me, premolar, and in the process, that canine may have caused a dilaceration of the premolar. So pretty interesting, right? Okay, it really should have been out here, just like this, right? This canine is located anterior to premolar, but somehow this failed to position itself anterior to premolar, and in the process of again doing so, it may have caused the dilaceration of the premolar. So let me go back to the current pentomograph. There. Okay. Do you see that mesial dilaceration of the premolar? There's a crown. Again, with respect to its position to premolar, it really hasn't changed much. Okay. Thank you. I hope you uh, find this video to be interesting and um, uh, enjoy, uh, fun, <laughs> okay? Um, if you like it, leave a <laughs> positive comment and uh, s you need to subscribe, right? <laughs> so that I can continue to share these cases with you. Alright, take care. Bye.